What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode in the Survival Project series that we're building on my channel. And in this little series, we are going to work on the info window. If I press tab here, it's that middle box right here in the middle. You can see it's pretty much working. We got the icon craft button. We got the slider working. So when we move it up, we want to craft five of them right here. And it tells us how many of each ingredient we need in order to craft it. We can come down here and select this again and it pops up and same thing here. You can see that the information of it changes. So let's go ahead and come over here and select the bread and the berries. I added some little extra quantity there on those so we can do the crafting. Come over here and you can see as we move this up, oh, now all of a sudden we don't have enough berries for this so we can no longer craft this. I'm gonna drop this down to, let's say two. So it's gonna take two bread, six berries. You can see it's gonna take two and six, craft it. And we get two bread. These aren't stackable. We only got them set to one for now. Here we go, this is what we have left. So now if we come over here to the health, select the bandage. You can see it's gonna allow us to craft here as well if we want. So the max we can do is three of these. I'm gonna select that and there we go. It's converted that. So now we have three bandages and red berry breads. So that's how the crafting system's gonna work. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Today's episode and others just like it are brought to you by the patrons listed on the screen. If you'd like to support the channel in future development, then consider visiting my Patreon or Buy Me a Coffee page, where you can receive various benefits such as early access to my videos, project downloads, as well as personalized support. You may also want to consider joining the community by joining my Discord server, where you can receive help from me as well as the community. So come on over and be a part of the conversation. All right, let's go ahead and open up the search window for blueprints. Uh, Control, Shift, and F brings you up here. And let's just go at To Do. Let's see where we're at. And we've got two uh, to do's that we have remaining from the last series. So this first one, I'm gonna open up this one and you can see we have to update the craftable info function. Actually, we just got to put that in here. So let's grab the crafting info window, drag that out here, get it. And then let's just call update craftable info, plug everything in right here, including the output pin there. And then that should be good. Let's go ahead and add in a return node. So now we can go ahead and get rid of this comment here. We've got that done and compile it and save it. And if we come back over here to the find and blueprints again, and then just refresh this, we've only got one left. So let's go ahead and open this up and we need to actually build this function now. So actually what we're gonna end up needing to do is we don't want this to be a true function. We wanna create this as an event. And the reason for that is, is because we're gonna have to uh, run an async node. So this should be relatively easy. Let's just go ahead and right click this. And in here, you should be able to see convert function to event. Now, hopefully this doesn't break any of the uh, calls we have to this, but we'll find out, convert it to an event. There we go. And it even moved out our comment there. So let's compile this now and let's just make sure really quick that this didn't break any of our other calls to it. So if we come back here to the primary HUD, you can see if we compile this, it doesn't look like it broke anything there. And the other place we have this, if we come back to the crafting window, we have this called here, primary HUD, crafting info window, and we are binding everything to that. Let's go ahead and compile it. Didn't get any errors, so everything seems to be good. So come back here to the crafting info window. So let's go ahead and build up this function now. First thing we need to do is just right click on the craftable item input or output as it were and select the promote the variable. And I'm gonna leave that as the name crafting item. So what we need to do, pull off of here and let's go resolve the soft, soft reference. Now there's gonna be a possibility that what we passing through here is not resolved. So that means this isn't loaded into memory, which means this is gonna be null and we're not gonna be able to do anything with it and we're gonna get some errors. So let's go ahead and pull off this now and go is valid. So let's drop a branch in here now and then just plug in this is valid. And if this is not valid, what we need to do is we need to grab our crafting item variable that we just set, uh, saved and go async load class asset and then plug this into the false. So if we're coming through here and if this isn't already loaded into memory, then we want to go ahead and load it asynchronously. And we're not gonna do anything with this class. We're just gonna load it. This is gonna load it into memory. And so now this will be 
uh, resolvable. So I'm just gonna pull off of here and I'm gonna add a reroute node and just plug this in here from the completed into the reroute. So now what we need to do is grab our craftable item again. Let's go ahead and resolve it. Now we could just pull off of this if we really wanted to, but I'm just gonna leave it like this. Pull off of this now and we go get class defaults. And one nice thing about doing it this way as well is see, cause from here, if we were to just use this one, we can't get class defaults because it doesn't know what class this is. This is just a basic object class. So there are no defaults to this, which means like we did in a previous episode, we're gonna end up having to cast this to our craftable item. So now this just saves us the need to actually do the casting in here. So now the defaults that we want to have available, just go ahead and select this. And on the details panel here, go ahead and uncheck the ingredients. We want the amount when crafted. We want the display name, thumbnail, and the item description. From that, I'm gonna come over here to the big image. This is the big window that we have in the widget. And I'm going to set brush from texture, drag in the execution there, and the texture will be the thumbnail. Next, let's grab the amount when crafted right here, drag that and go set text. And let's grab the amount when crafted. And this one, we're actually gonna multiply this so drag out, hit the star key, get the multiply. And what we want to multiply is by a value called craft amount. So let's create a new one here. We're going to set this. This is going to be used when we move the slider that's in the widget. If you don't remember what the widget looks like, let's jump it back out here. This is the big image here. These are the ingredients list right here. Item description, craft button, and we got the slider here. So this is going to be our craft amount. We're going to be able to move this up however many you want to do it, move it up. And so this will be our craft amount. So we need to account for that and we'll set that up shortly, but let's go ahead and get the variable now. And and I'm gonna call this variable craft amount and I'm gonna set it to an integer. So now I'm gonna drag this out and this is what we're gonna plug into the multiplication here. And I'm gonna compile it so I can set a default here. Always want this craft amount to be a default of one, a minimum of one. So now we can take this amount and convert this to a text so that it can be displayed on this. So now let's go ahead and grab the item name, which is right here. Again, set text. And the text we want from this is the item name right here. Drag it out, plug it in, it's gonna convert it for you. And I will make this pretty in just a little bit, plug that in. So now what we need to do is now we need to start adding the items to the ingredient list. So what we'll do now is go ahead and I'm gonna drag off this class. I'm gonna add a reroute node just to bring it back over here. We could just copy and paste this over instead of running the reroute nodes. But now we need to create a couple extra functions. The first one, we're going to create a new function and it's going to be here on our info window. So create a new function and I'm going to call this new function set ingredients list. And then we need an input on this and I'm going to call this craftable item and it is going to be class um, the craftable item class reference. Drag off of here. Let's get defaults. And with this one, we're gonna need the ingredients list off of here. But first let's create a new variable. I'm gonna call this one B has ingredients. And I'm gonna make this of type Boolean. And let's go ahead and make this in array. So ultimately what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the list of ingredients here. And for every ingredient that we have, we're gonna set whether we have those ingredients or not. And then we're gonna pass that out of here at the end. So let's take this out. Every time we call this function, we want to make sure that we clear anything that is in here. So take the clear and then just plug this in. I'm going to pull out here, add a reroute, and let's go ahead and get the keys. And then we're just going to go ahead and iterate over this. So we just need a regular for each loop, plug that in, and the array will be from the keys. So what we're going to need to do here now is we need to create a new interface call. And so with that, we're going to put a new interface call on the BI Interact HUD. So go ahead and open up your content browser, go to your interfaces, inventory, BI Interact HUD, open this up, select add new function. I'm gonna call this find inventory item. I'm gonna put it underneath my crafting category right there. And then for the inputs on this, we need, I'm gonna call this ingredient and it will be of type base item and I'm gonna make this a soft class reference. And then for an output on this, I'm gonna call this amount 
available. I'm gonna make this an integer. Go ahead and compile that now. So now if we come back into the crafting info window, we can go ahead and get the player character. And from the player character, I'm gonna go find inventory item message. Plug this into the loop body. And the ingredient we wanna check is the array element. So real quick, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a comment at to do build find item on player that'll work change it to green and then we can remember to come back and build this in just a little while so now that we have this built drag off of here and what we need now is we need to actually get the values so with this reroute i'm going to come up here and drop in another reroute node i'm going to come down and go values all right and like we've done with other functions in the past i'm going to drag off of here and we're going to get and we just need a copy of this we don't need a reference we don't need to make any changes to this we just need to get the information and we're going to get it from the array index because this will always sync up the key index here that we're on will sync up with the value index there so now that we have that, we're gonna come out here and this is gonna get us the value, which is the amount that we have. So I'm gonna drag off of this and I'm gonna multiply this by the craft amount. So what we're doing here is we're actually just getting uh, how many items we need for this particular ingredient and then multiplying by craft amount. And then we're gonna check this against our actual inventory right here to make sure that we have enough items. So I'm gonna drag this out and then do a greater than or equal to this multiplied value right there. Drop in a branch. And so now again, this is just checking. This is how many we have available. We're finding how many of this ingredient we have based off of the slider, multiplying that together, getting this and making sure we have enough in there. So plug that into the branch, actually delete this branch. <laughs> what we need to do now is we just need to actually get this has ingredient. Let's get it. And then we're just gonna add to this array. And because we're clearing out every time, there's nothing in here. So every iteration we have, we're gonna take this and plug this in and it's just gonna add it to the array right here. And the index of this will line up with the index of this. So these will always stay in line right there. So let's go ahead and create one more variable here. This should be the last one we need. And I'm gonna call this one ingredients and I'm gonna make it of type craftable item, soft class, excuse me, base item, not craftable item. Let's go base item, soft class reference. We're gonna make this a map and an integer for the second one. So go ahead and compile it so we have that. So now grab the ingredients. Let's go add. Make sure you go add from under map, not under operator. And then the thing we need to add is the ingredient from the for loop. So I'm just gonna add in a reroute and then just plug this in here into the add. And then for the value, the integer right here, we're gonna just pull off of this multiplication and plug that straight in right there. Next, I'm gonna pull off of, let's pull off of this reroute node right there and let's go resolve the soft, soft reference. And then let's get defaults. And then from this defaults, all we need is hide unconnected. And we're gonna take the thumbnail is the only thing we need here. And then we're gonna set the ingredient slot. Okay, so we need to create a new function, call this set ingredient slot. Okay, let's just set us parameters. We'll come back and build this function in just a minute. First parameter, we're gonna go B has enough item, make this a Boolean and another one. And I'm gonna call this one thumbnail. And it's gonna be type of texture 2D object reference. And then the last input parameter, amount, and this will be an integer. Go ahead and compile it. We're gonna come back here now. Let's just add a comment. We're gonna rebuild this, but let's add a comment just because at to do. And then, so now let's go back into the set ingredients list. So now we can call that function set ingredient slot come back out here. Let's take our thumbnail. We're just going to plug that in right there. Has enough. We're just going to pull off of this value right here. And then the amount will be off of this multiplication right there. Okay. So yeah, so this set ingredient slot, as I showed in the designer, we have all the ingredient slots right here. So with each one, we're just setting what picture, what icon and all that needs to be there, as well as the items. We're also gonna set the color of it to be desaturated if we don't have enough items. So that's essentially what this is gonna do right there. So we'll come back and build that in a second. And actually there is one thing we still need to add to that is we need to have, let's go back 
here, we need to have an output parameter and let's call this one ingredient slot. And this will be of type crafting ingredient image object reference. Go ahead and compile it now. Come back out here to the set ingredients list. Now we have this. So now if we grab our ingredient panel, drag it out here, add child to grid. Make sure you do add child to grid, plug that in. And the child we want to add is the ingredient slot. Now we have an in row and we have an in column. Well, we're only gonna have one row in there. So this will always be at zero, but the in column, what this will be is we will just pull off of the array index of the for each loop. So just drag all the way out here and plug that into column. And then just go through and make this all pretty so it's readable and I will do that off camera. But before I go and do that, let's go ahead and set the ingredient slot now. So jump back in here into the set ingredient slot function. All right, so this function is gonna lead us down a little bit of a rabbit hole again, but we'll get through it. There's a lot of little bits and pieces to all of this. So first let's go ahead and create widget. And the widget we wanna create is the crafting ingredient image. And then from here, we actually, we need to create two functions. So both of them are going to be on the crafting ingredient image. So let's go ahead and locate that. So click browse, and then let's go ahead and open this up. And we're just gonna create these functions and set its parameters and we'll come back and code them in just a few minutes. But I'm gonna delete these for now. And the first function I'm gonna call set ingredient available. It's first input parameter, I'm gonna call B has enough item boolean is good with that second parameter i'm going to call image and this will be of texture 2d object reference and then the second function we need i'm going to call this one set amount needed and the input on this i'm just going to call amount and it will be of type integer go ahead and compile this now let's head back to the crafting info window so from here now we can drag off of this and let's go set ingredient available and then has enough we're going to drag off of the input there for the image drag off the input thumbnail right there and then from there, I'm gonna drag off of the creation of the widget again and in a reroute and drag off here and let's go set amount needed. And then as you probably guessed it, we just need the amount that was passed in at the input value right there. So just plug that in and then we can go ahead and plug it into the reroute node and then take the ingredient slot right there and just pass it into the return node. So while we're in here, let's go ahead and set the ingredients available function. So now we're inside the crafting ingredient image widget set ingredient available function. So from here, let's start off with a branch and we're gonna plug in has enough items. So do we have enough items? If it's true, let's grab the ingredient right there. Let's get it and set brush from texture plug it into the true and if that's the case then we just want to take the image that is being passed in and plug that into the texture and then let's just go ahead and plug in a return node at the end of this and if we don't have enough items well what we need to do is we need to actually create a dynamic material instance we haven't built this material yet so this is just a very simple desaturation material so let's go ahead and create that now Open up the content browser. I'm gonna come down here into the widgets material folder, the main material, right click, and I'm gonna go add a new material. I'm gonna call this one M underscore icon desaturation. Go ahead and open it up and we're gonna set its material domain to be user interface. We're gonna set the blend mode to be translucent. Let's go ahead and add a texture sample node. And I'm gonna right click on this and go convert to parameter. I'm just name this texture and it's default texture. I'm just gonna set this as the bread icon. It doesn't matter. It needs something in here. You're gonna get an error if you don't set something default, um, but just go ahead and set it as the bread or whatever you choose. From here now, I'm gonna drag off the RGBA and I'm gonna go desaturate. I don't think it really matters which one, but I'm gonna go off of color here, desaturation. And then I'm just gonna plug this straight into the final color. All right, you can see we got that there right now, but we also need to take the mask I'm gonna drag off of here and I'm gonna add a mask, component mask. 
and we're gonna uncheck the R and G and just check the A and then take this and plug this into opacity. And that should do it for this function here or for this material. So go ahead and save it. So now let's open up our content browser again and right click on this and go create material instance. And I'm just gonna rename mine to be the same except for it's gonna be MI underscore icon desaturation. And I'm gonna take this and just put this in the upper level material folder here. I'm gonna move it, come out here, and here is my material instance. All right, so now that we have that, I'm gonna go ahead and close out this icon desaturation. And then now we're back in the crafting ingredient image widget blueprint in the set ingredients available. And off the false, go ahead and create dynamic material instance there. And the parent, we're going to find the icon desaturation material instance. Make sure you select the material instance right there. We're not gonna worry about an optional, the optional name right there. From this, let's go set texture parameter value. And the parameter value is the one we created. Make sure you spell this the exact same way you did in the material. Parameter I called was texture and the value will be this image that we're passing in from the material instance. I'm gonna add in a reroute node and then go uh, grab the ingredients right here. Go set brush from material. And we're gonna pass in the material instance right there. So that's it. Let's go ahead and add the reroute note or the return note at the end. And that wraps up this little function. So now let's head over to the set amount needed function. And this is gonna be another very simple one. We're just gonna grab the amount right there and go set text and the text we need to set is the amount coming in so drag off there and it's going to convert it to an integer to text and then a return node at the end here and plug that in and there we go we have these functions set up so let's head back to the crafting info window widget all right so we're in the set ingredient slot and we just created or we just uh built these two functions right here so this function is done so let's delete our to do comment and compile it and go ahead and close out this function now so we go back here to the set ingredients list we built this function here so the only thing left we have to do is do the find inventory item so let's go ahead and do that so we can wrap up this function here so let's go ahead and run over to the third person character that we have now or whatever character you are currently using so because our character currently implements this interface it should automatically be over here crafting and find inventory item so let's go ahead and double click that and because it has a return value it is a function instead of an event so now we need to to actually build a new function here. So we're calling this one, but we need to create a new function and it needs to come from our primary inventory. So I'm just gonna drag this out here. So inside of our inventory component, so head now to our AC inventory component. And then in here, let's create a new function. There's gonna be a few functions we're gonna have to create in here, but this is the first one. Let's go get inventory item amount. And this needs an input. I'm gonna call this input item, and this is gonna be of type base item, and I'm gonna make this a soft class reference. So let's grab our inventory, our items array, and then we're gonna run a for each loop on this item array. And the array element, let's break this out, and all we need off of this is the item and the quantity. So I'm gonna uncheck the other two, just to make it a little bit smaller. And from here, I wanna check is the item class equal to the item being passed in. And when we plug it in right here, it's gonna automatically convert this node to check it as a soft reference. So if you hover over it, it's, it's gonna tell you that it's uh, changing that right there to be a soft class reference. Drop in a branch now, and we need to check this right here, plug that into the condition. And now all we care is if it's true. If the items don't match, then we just need to go to the next iteration within our items. So if it is true, I'm gonna create a local variable here, L underscore amount found, and I'm gonna change its type to integer. So if we found any here, I'm gonna drag this out and I'm gonna add the quantity right there. Excuse me, I don't wanna set this. I want to take this out. Let's get that. And we want to add the quantity here 
to what's already in this variable. And then from there, we will set it in the true here. So let me explain what we're doing here. We're just coming through, we're checking our inventory because we could have more than one slot of our inventory with the same item we're looking for. So we're gonna loop through our entire inventory looking for this one item that's coming in. So for each instance of this within our inventory that we find, we're getting its quantity, adding it into this local variable right here. We're just adding it up. So this will add, if we have five different slots with three items each of the same item in there, then we're gonna get a total of 15 here. So now we're gonna actually return this. So if we get the return node on this, we need a return. I'm gonna call this amount available of type integer. Now we're going to take this local variable and plug it in there. And the reason why I'm doing a local variable here is because every time this function finishes, it's going to reset that value to zero. So we don't have to physically do it ourselves. And that should be it for this function. So go ahead and compile and save it. And let's head back to the player character and we can implement this there. All right, back on the player. Now let's drag off our primary inventory and go get inventory item amount. Plug that in, plug the ingredients into the item slot, drop this into the return node and then the amount available will be returned there. And that's it for that one. So go ahead and compile, save that, and let's head back into the crafting info window widget. All right, so now back in the crafting info window widget, uh, come in here. We have now finished the set ingredients list function in here. So we can go ahead and delete this at to do in here and go ahead and compile and save it. And let's head back out to the event graph. And we're just working backwards here as we come into the new functions, we build them and then we just work our way backwards through this. So hopefully you're not getting too lost in how I'm making my way through. So let's grab the set ingredients list, plug that in. And now let's just plug in the class right there. So now we need to create a, another function that's going to come right here. I'm going to call this set craft button. And what this is going to do is this is just going to enable or disable the crafting button right here. If we don't have enough ingredients, then we want this to be disabled. But if we do have all the required ingredients, then this will be enabled so we can craft the item. This is going to be fairly easy. Let's grab our has ingredients. Let's go find. So all we're going to find here now, remember has ingredients is Boolean. So there's only two options that be in here positive or negative or true or false so with that we need to make sure in order to enable the button everything within this array needs to be true so if we just if there's just one thing that is false then we're not going to be able to craft this item so it doesn't matter um, just any false in here is going to be disabled for that craft button so what we do is we just come out here we drag off go is this greater than or equal to zero so in other words did we find a false item in here if this did not find a false item then this is going to come back negative one so any false item here will be zero or greater so it actually will probably just be yeah it'll be zero or greater so with that instead of just running a branch here what i'm going to do is i'm going to come out here and go not and I want the not Boolean. I'm gonna grab the craft button component right there. And then I'm gonna go set is enabled. So the reason why I grab the not here is because if this finds a false in here, this will be true. So that means this will set the button enabled. So instead I just plugged it into the not right here. So it's gonna reverse this coming out. So if this is, in other words, if we find a false item, this will be true. We want to flip that to false, so we want this to be disabled, okay? So hopefully you understand the reverse logic there. Technically, you could come in here and go, is this less than zero? And if it's less than zero, then it will be enabled. So you could do it that way as well, but this is just how I set it up. Add your return node, plug it in, and that should be it for that one. So head back out here into the event graph, grab our set button function right there, and just plug that on in. And lastly for this, Let's go ahead now and grab our item long description right here. Drag this out and get it. We want to go set text, but we want to set multi-line text box, not the style, but the set text multi-line text box. And then now if we come back here, we can grab our item description and just plug that straight into 
the text there, and that should be good to go for this event. Go ahead and compile and save it. One last thing I forgot here is we need to grab the ingredient panel. Let's drag this out. And before the set ingredient panel, we need to go clear children. So right now we have some test items in there. We can go in and we could delete everything within our widget, um, but I'm gonna leave it there here in the designer. I'm gonna leave everything here because it's just a relatively complex and I wanna be able to see this. So we're clearing out these items here before we start. So now we should be able to uh, compile it and save it. And now we should be able to get a general idea of what it looks like. So go ahead and hit the play button, All right? Now that we're in here, if we hit the tab, there we go. You can see we have the ingredients right there. We can select the health, select the bandage, and there we go. We've got this craft button button is disabled because we don't have the items. The items are desaturated. Uh, we haven't set this up yet, so we will set this up in just a minute. If we come back here to food and hit that. So let's go ahead and grab a couple items in the world, pick these up, hit tab again, and there you go. You can see we have enough bread to be able to craft this. Come down here to health, hit the bandage, and both of them are lit up because we have enough items there. So we have enough to control it. We need two bread and one berry. We got plenty of bread and one berry in there so we can craft that if we need to. So, so far everything is working the way it should. So let's go ahead and exit out of this. So to prevent this episode from getting a little too long, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off right here. I do apologize, but I just wanted to keep this into a reasonable time. Look forward to the next episode as it comes out. If you found this useful, hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe while you're down there liking it and hit that bell icon so you're notified when the next episode drops in this series, as well as any other video that I do, you will be notified about that. And until next time, peace.